May the love and peace of the Lord be with us all, as we listen to today's Gospel and Reflection. Let us now listen to the Word of God. February 16, 2024 Friday after Ash Wednesday A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Then the disciples of John drew near to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast frequently, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, How can the sons of the groom mourn, while the groom is still with them? But the days will arrive when the groom will be taken away from them, and then they shall fast. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How can embracing fasting and self-denial help you overcome fleshly temptations and become a more effective instrument of sacrificial love in your daily life? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Matthew 9 verse 15 Our appetites and fleshly desires can easily cloud our thinking and keep us from desiring only God and His holy will. Therefore, in order to curb one's disordered appetites, it is useful to mortify them by acts of self-denial, such as fasting. But during Jesus' public ministry, when he was daily with his disciples, it appears that self-denial was unnecessary for his disciples. One can only speculate that this was because Jesus was so intimately present to them every day, that his divine presence sufficed to curb any and every disordered affection. But the day did come when Jesus was taken away from them, first by his death, and then shortly after, by his ascension into heaven. After the Ascension and Pentecost, Jesus' relationship with his disciples changed. It was no longer a tangible and physical presence. It was no longer a daily dose of authoritative teaching and inspiring miracles that they saw. Instead, their relationship with our Lord began to take on a new dimension of conformity to Jesus' passion. The disciples were now being called to imitate our Lord by turning their eyes of faith to him interiorly and exteriorly acting as his instrument of sacrificial love. And for that reason, the disciples needed their passions and fleshly appetites under control. Hence, after Jesus' ascension and with the beginning of the disciples' public ministry, they greatly benefited from fasting and all other forms of mortification. Each one of us is called to be not only a follower of Christ, a disciple, but also an instrument of Christ, an apostle. And if we are to fulfill these roles well, our disordered fleshly appetites cannot get in the way. We need to allow the Spirit of God to consume us and lead us in all that we do. Fasting and all other forms of mortification help us to stay focused upon the Spirit, rather than upon our weaknesses and fleshly temptations. Reflect today upon the importance of fasting and mortification of the flesh. These penitential acts are not usually desirable at first. But that's the key. By doing that which our flesh does not desire, we strengthen our spirit to take greater control, which enables our Lord to use us and direct our actions more effectively. Commit yourself to this holy practice and you will be amazed at how transforming it will be. Let us pray. My dear Lord, I thank you for choosing to use me as your instrument. I thank you that I may be sent by you to share your love with the world. Give me the grace to conform myself more fully to you by mortifying my disordered appetites and desires, so that you and you alone can take complete control of my life. May I be open to the gift of fasting and may this penitential act help to transform my life. Jesus, I trust in you.
Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Gospel and Reflection. We hope that our small effort gave you a bit of inspiration as you journey your day with God. Please give us a like so this will reach to as many people as possible. Again, thank you and may God bless us all.